Oh, come on up. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't, don't be shy. Well, thank you. A year goes by so fast. It was a, a year ago uh, that we were proclaiming uh, May Mental Health Awareness Month, and, and here we are again this year. Uh, so this year, I am honored to be joined from the uh, members of the San Diego Ch uh, Center for Children's Staff. And we have here uh, today uh, Greg Helton, the, the Vice President of Development and Marketing, Allison Beck, Director of Development and Communications, uh, Jacqueline, is it Grulick, Director of Human Services, and um, many other staff members. Uh, but the center um, in Kearney Mesa, where uh, I've toured, and, and uh, th that's when uh, Rana Sanders was there. Uh, there's actually nine centers all around uh, the city of San Diego. But um, I would love to just you know thank the members here and all over uh, for doing wonderful work uh, on the issue of mental health especially with our children. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, the need for more mental health awareness, especially given a lot of the, the tragedies over the last several years around the country. And it's really important to note that the San Diego Center for Children has been doing their part for quite some time. In fact, um, uh, since 1949, the month of May has been nationally observed as Mental Health Awareness Month. And right here in San Diego County, an estimated 750,000 citizens, that's one in four adults, and one in five children are affected with mental health issues, and about half of these uh, individuals actually forego treatment because of the self-stigma. And um, I just wanted to share, like I did last year, a little bit of my own personal experience. This is very personal for me. Um, last year, I talked about the mental health issues that my mother struggled with. Um, but my sister um, also inherited uh, the issues that my uh, mother had. In fact, my dad tells me that from the time she was an infant, he could tell that there was something different about her. And um, that was in the, the early 60s, so nobody really knew much about you know, mental health like we do today. Um, my sister died almost two years ago, and uh, she really suffered uh, all those years. Um, as a child in particular, when I look back on our childhood, you know, she was so destructive and unstable and, and erratic and paranoid and chaotic and intense anger outbursts. Um, and all of these things that we had to live with as a family that really, between my mother and her, really uh, destroyed our family. And that's how we uh, ended up in foster homes. I was able to adjust to a foster home, but because of her destructive behavior, she was bounced around from one foster home to another till she ended up in a very uh, tough um, school for girls, uh, a home for girls. Um, she just was not able to adjust. So um, in looking back now, fast forward all these years, I've, I've done a lot over the last couple of years to really um, get to know who my sister was even after her death. And what it looks like she had was a borderline personality disorder, which is common in a lot of children. In fact, when I toured the facility, I could really, I could see uh, that there were kids there that li likely had that. And so all of, uh, all of those things I mentioned, they're treatable. They are treatable if people are uh, aware of it and get the counseling that they need. Um, and so when, when, when my sister died a couple years ago, um, I looked through all her belongings. Uh, she, she died very lonely because of all of that destructive behavior. She didn't really have friends. It was just family and by her side, no spouse, no children. And it was very sad. Um, and I saw through her belongings, she tried so desperately to help herself. All the books and tapes I found and the medication and everything. She really tried hard. Um, and so anyway, I, you know, I'll move on with that. I just wanted to just share that you just never know um, whose family is suffering. And if a, you know, a council member can have that in her background, anyone can. And I want to uh, move forward and help to take the stigma off of mental health um, and, and hopefully um, help people get the, the counseling and, and the help that they need. And, and, and uh, you know, the, there's organizations out there all over San Diego who are helping. So um, in, in, 
in almost cl in closing on my personal story, I want to say that um, as my sister was dying, she said uh, something that just sticks with me, and I think of frankly all the time. She said, um, "I wish I had been more of a a giver than a taker." But anyone who has dealt with mental health issues know that they are not capable. They're not capable of being givers. So I am here on her behalf um, to be the giver that she could not be. And so um, I knew I would have a hard time getting through this. Um, so anyway, um, I would just you know, really have a heart for children and everything that you do. So uh, there's a lot of where is in here, but um, I did. <laughs> I did want to say a couple more things, and maybe uh, I've talked too much, so you can tell us about your center and about what you do. And um, I am just uh, thrilled to be here today. The mission of, of protecting the joy of childhood, preventing emotional suffering, inciting change, and um, you know, bringing the vision to aspire a world where all children and families live joyful, healthy lives. I am um, honored to proclaim on behalf of the citizens of San Diego that May 2014 be Mental Health Awareness Month and honoring the wonderful work and mission that the San Diego Center for Children does every day. Thank you. And first I'll introduce, uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, first I will introduce Allison. Allison? Take it away. Thank you. <laughs> mm, thank you. Uh, we appreciate this um, proclamation so very much and this awareness to this issue of behavioral and mental health. And I personally appreciate your sharing such um, resonating story um, of, your, of your personal experience of mental health. Um, it, is, it is a fact that one in five children in San Diego in our country are really struggling with a behavioral health or mental health disorder. And even of those, only 20% are able to receive the treatment that they so severely need. It's either a lack of resources, it's the stigma of getting help that they need, or it's just not even understanding the problem to begin with, to treat. And it's time to talk. It's time to talk about behavioral health, and that a person's state of mind is of equal importance and of equal significance to someone's physical health. It is a holistic approach, it is a holistic need, and it is a holistic health and a health issue. Our families, our teachers, our doctors, our community, our legislature, we all need to recognize the importance that this, this issue deserves, and we need to begin talking about it and doing something about it. Children are actually surprisingly resilient. Um, they can overcome difficult circumstances and incredible life challenges, but they need guidance and they need help. And the San Diego Center for Children and the folks that stand behind me that have been 300 other staff members dedicated to providing year in and year out 24-7 treatment and therapy and services to the children in our programs understand that importance and we ask and we um, invite you to join us in that. We, are helping, we, have, we have been in existence for 127 years taking care of children and families in our community. Um, we don't do it alone with the community support and with volunteers and with the, the staff people that stand with us. We take care of more than 1,000 children and their, ch and their families every day. And yes, while the services and uh, treatment that we provide is a very intense level of treatment for the children in our particular program, or it can be, um, it doesn't have to be. Um, our, th that's because those issues have gone on and persisted way too long. And we ask that our mission today be one of awareness to this and one of prevention, one that is recognized as the importance of behavioral health is one of the entire health of a person. So thank you for recognition and accepting. We proudly accept this uh, proclamation and pr appreciate your story um, alongside ours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Greg Helton, Vice President of Development, and I, I too want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Um, prior to arriving at the Center for Children, I was at the San Diego Rescue Mission working with Herb Johnson as the Vice President of Development. And to me today, where I am at, I can at least now hope that the changes that we can do in these children's lives now will stop maybe that next generation or slow it down of homelessness that the city is. Um, dealing with and many other organizations. 
Um, and I thank you for recognizing the Center for Children. Um, it's amazing to see what we do each day there. Uh, I challenge you to come by for a tour. I, I would welcome to give you that opportunity to see what's going on in the lives of these children that come broken, abused, hurting, needing hope and love. And um, we're there for them, and, and you can be too. So thank you for your support. Thank you for this great day for the Center for Children, and uh, have a great e rest of your week. As uh, photos are being taken, I see Ms. Leitner has some comments. I do at that. I would like to compliment the Center uh, for Children. I uh, did take a tour of your facility a number of years back in K Kearney Mesa. was very impressed by the levels of treatment you offered and the services you provided for folks. It is something that just get the word out. Um, I wished that I had known about it when my nieces and nephews were living with me, and I did not, and it would have been such an amazing resource to use. And um, Bless you for what you do. It's huge. Joy is a very important characteristic in a child. Thank you, Ms. Leitner. I, too, have had an opportunity to, to tour the center. Uh, it is a remarkable place. And to Ms. Zaff, thank you so much for bringing this and certainly sharing your story. I know this is a personal passion. Uh, and uh, I think that politics is best when people use their passions and try and affect change, which I know is what you're trying to do. So thank you for bringing this to council this morning.